Ladies and gents, welcome back. This is JM Cad, and my name is Joe McGovern. We're doing more 3D models here. So hone your skills, sharpen your blade, and let's get going. I'll see you out there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another AutoCAD 2022 mechanical 3D modeling video. Let's start with our settings. Number one, make sure that F10 is turned on. That's your polar, which is going to give you your green polar line. Number two, make sure F11 is turned on. That's your object snap tracking. Number three, I like to have F12 turned off. That's your dynamic input, which means that when it's on, it's going to have these little boxes follow around your cursor. Uh, those boxes are usable and you could type distances like let's say I wanted to go you know, 10 at 30 degrees or something like that. But I like everything defaulting down to the command line because uh, it gives you one place to look rather than trying to find your cursor on the screen. So I turn F12 off. Number four, make sure when you go into OS enter, that's your object snap tools. Make sure that you have endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection, and extension turned on. Uh, we can turn these other ones on on the fly when we need them, but we don't need them right now. And that's it. So here we go, ready to draw. I'm looking at this model. I'm looking at three subtractions. There's three different uh, diameter circles. We got a diameter one, a diameter 1.5, and another diameter one. The main size here is eight inches wide by four inches deep. And then we have some boxes that I'll draw on top of that main shape. And then I'll do some chamfer edges and I think we'll be done. All right. So let's start with the eight by four. What I'm going to do is switch this back to the top view. I'm going to go back to 2D wireframe. And I'm just going to scroll out and draw over here somewhere using my line or polyline tool. That's up to you Four down eight to the right. As you can see, I'm using that green line. That's that F10 polar drawing up. I'm going to go four inches and then I'm going to close. Now I can take a diagonal line like this, or I can draw a line across like this, or I can draw a line across like this. And by the way, I'm talking about finding the center of the circle. It is a diameter of 1.5. I can get away without drawing any lines by just going here and sliding to the right on the green line and then going here and sliding up on the green line and you will get an intersection at those two points. So I like doing that. It's a little bit faster than drawing any lines and there's your circle, all right? So now in a 3D view, zoom into that a little bit. We're gonna take these four lines and join them together. That's gonna give you your one polyline. That's why I said before that you could use a polyline if you would like to. Uh, you won't have to join it at that point. But the problem is when you use a polyline is that you can't offset one single line without exploding it. So I like to just draw lines and then join it later, um, but it works either way. All right, so we're gonna take these two shapes here and we are going to extrude them down and that's gonna go a negative one. And that depth is one because the height of the entire model is three and the height of the pieces that are on top of that surface are two. So obviously through math, we get one. So that's what we got right here. Uh, I am going to select this and move this up above my grid. That way I don't have to look at the grid lines. And I'm then going to change to my 3D tools. I should have already done that. This is going to be a subtract from the main model. Enter, small model, enter. I don't normally work on conceptual, so I'm going to change back to 2D wireframe. The next part I'm going to build is this right side here. And it's easier to see on conceptual. That's why I keep changing back and forth. We're going to have a box that is one inch wide by four inches deep by two inches tall. So if we start with that on here with the box tool, you can click on this corner, you can hit length, and you can either go on the green lines and type a distance, or you can just say, hey, I want it to go this far back, and then I wanna go one that way, and then I wanna go up to enter, and you get something like this. So we'll leave that one alone for now. We're gonna draw the other side. The other side is a box that is four by one with a, an additional box next to it that makes it look like an L. So let's draw the initial one first. And actually, why don't we just steal this one, copy. We'll take this from the bottom left corner and put this on this corner. So we'll go ahead and draw another box for this 1.5 wide by one deep by two tall box that's gonna be right here. And then once we union everything together, we'll be able to chamfer that edge and it'll be done. So switching back to 2D wireframe, I think it's a little bit easier to work with. Box tool, click at this corner here. Length, you're gonna go along the green line and type 1.5. You're gonna go back one, enter, and you're gonna go up two. Now I don't even have to type two here. I can just click at this top surface and it'll make them the same height. So let's go ahead and union everything together. You now have one solid shape, conceptual. 
that makes it so I only have to do one chamfer edge here rather than doing two of them because of the two pieces. All right, let's go ahead and do chamfer edge. You're going to do distance one, enter, two, enter. So that's distance one and distance two. That's going to measure two inches back and one inch down and connect them when I click on this edge. And then you have to hit enter twice. That's how you get that L shape. I'll go back to 2D wireframe again. Same thing on the other side, chamfer edge, distance, one, two, and you get that edge there and you hit enter twice. So this model here is basically done. The only thing we have to do is a drill hole that's going through the entire thing from one side to the other. So what I like to do for that is switch to the left side, pretend like this one doesn't exist, orbit this down a little bit, just so you can get a good view at it. Draw a line down on this edge because we can't use that edge right now. It's part of a 3D model. So in order to do an offset, you need to have a line to offset and then draw a line here. You are then going to figure out the position of that circle. So let's take a look here. Resetting my view and looking at the main model here, you can see the diameter is one. This part is two. So the circle's in the center. It's one inch over. And this part is two. So the circle is one inch down. So going back to my left side and doing a little bit of an orbit, I have my two lines to start with. I'm not going to draw them on the other side because I might as well just get this circle done in one shot. When I do my offset, one down, one in. Don't forget to erase your original lines because they'll be there forever and ever. And then you have a position where since I just clicked right, it'll allow me to draw on this surface and I'll be a diameter D enter one enter and then get rid of your center lines. And the reason why I did that on the very left face there is because now I can take this and extrude it all the way through from one side to the other. Looking at the top view, it does not matter how far you extrude it as long as the extrusion is going through the entire thing. And at that point, you can do a subtract, click the main model, hit enter, and click the small circle and hit enter. And then when you view that in 3D and you put it on conceptual, you will see that our model is done. All right. So real quick, while I have your attention in my description at the very bottom, I have a list of all the gear I use to shoot all my videos. So if you're interested in getting into shooting YouTube videos, making CAD tutorials or whatever it is that you're into, it's a lot of good gear, but it's also very affordable gear. I'm not a millionaire by any means. And this is the stuff that works well for me. So if you click one of those links and you buy through there, it would help my channel out immensely. And one more quick thing here, guys, if you could like the video, that would be great. That would push the video out into the YouTube abyss. If you want to subscribe to the channel to see future videos and you can turn on the bell to get future notifications. I really appreciate it, guys, and I will see you in the next one later.